Editors are such an integral part of using the editor that I wanted to take the opportunity in this video to introduce you to the concept and give you a basic demonstration of how they work. So notice I've got an image open on screen called Understanding Layers and it's going to serve us as a really good place to understand what's going on inside the Layers panel and notice as well that I have the Layers panel open on the right side of the screen. So first of all, what's the ultimate purpose of layers? Well, imagine you were drawing a complicated piece of art and therefore you were painting everything onto the same canvas. Well, if you wanted to change something that you painted earlier in the day, then you'd have to erase it or at least paint over it and chances are that whichever way you decide to go, it's going to create a big mess. Now if we were painting each element onto its own separate layer, say we were using tracing paper or a thin piece of transparent plastic as our canvas, if we later decided that we wanted to delete something, we could simply go back to that separate piece of plastic or tracing paper, whip it out and throw it away. Well, layers inside Photoshop Elements afford us the same level of control as that, the only difference is that we're now talking in the digital form. So let's go ahead and get the best view of this illustration we can by pressing the tab key to lose all of the panels and the toolbox and then go ahead and zoom in to 100% using the zoom control in the lower left corner if you haven't got the zoom ratio active already and then we'll just go ahead and center the image with the hand tool so we can see as much of it as possible and by the way it is worth me mentioning that the two images that we're going to be using in this video are not available from the project files, so just in case you're looking for them. The reason for that is because we're not really going to be doing anything with them apart from looking at them in this video, and that's something that you can do courtesy of my screen anyway. If this is how the layers panel looked, then the layers would be arranged as they sit on the left side. So the background layer would be at the bottom, then the blue square, then the red cross, and then finally the green circle. Where we see the shapes sitting on this checkerboard, that means they are sitting on a layer of transparency, which is why we can see through these layers to those below. So how would this image look in the image window? Well, let's see. I'll come up to the window menu and I'll come down and select layers. So we open up the real layers panel. Now I'll switch the layer stack to see what it looks like from the eyes of Photoshop Elements and here we go. Hopefully the reason why this image now looks this way is making sense to you. So we can see the entire green circle because that's right at the top of the stack. Below that we can see the red cross except for the areas that are covered by the green circle. Then we can see the blue square minus what's covered up by the red cross and the green circle and then under all of that we have our white background. So hopefully layers are now making a little more sense and you're able to relate to how the image is represented in the layers panel. So I'll hit the tab key again to get all of my panels back. Now I'll go ahead and close the image by coming up here to the file menu and hitting the close command like so. I'm asked if I want to save the changes and I'll just answer no. Now let's go back to the organizer by clicking the organize button if Elements hasn't sent you over here automatically and I'm just going to go ahead and switch over to another image called Dolphins because I want to show you the biggest advantage of using layers. This is a photograph that I took at SeaWorld in Orlando a few years ago and it's an image that contains a lot of layers. In fact, every last element found inside of it is on its own layer, and that's going to make it incredibly easy to edit in the long run. In order to see the whole document on screen, go ahead and double left click the hand tool up here at the top of the toolbox like so. Now let's take a look at the image, starting with these curtains on the side, and they're both on their own layers which can be found at the top of the stack. So at any point I can just press this little eyeball and switch the layer off to remove the effect from view. I can then switch the eyeball back on again to reinstate it. So what we're basically doing there is just hiding the layer temporarily 
and then displaying it again when we're ready. If I come down to the flipper layer, which just happens to be a text layer created with the type tool, I can easily turn off the text. I can also turn off the line that comes out from the side of the image and the little highlighted circle as well. I'll go ahead and turn them back on again because that's not the only advantage of having these elements on their own layers, not by a long shot. So I'll also show you how that now gives me the ability to change things, edit them, rotate them, change the colour of something, make it bigger or smaller. The list really is endless. As far as the text goes, I can go ahead and change the font, the formatting or the style by simply finding it in the layers panel and then double clicking the thumbnail to switch to the type tool and give me all the options I need down here in the options bar. So if I go ahead and click on the color swatch down here and then find another color such as bright red, something like this will do. Double click it and then we'll easily change the color of the text to red without changing anything else in the image. I'll click the green confirmation button to accept that change and then I'll come over to the toolbox and switch back to the hand tool. Now for the other side of the coin, what if I wasn't using layers? Well, if I save this image out as a JPEG for example, then I would flatten the image because those file formats do not support layers. In order to save the layers, I would need to be saving to a PSD file as we've already seen in this series. Even if I had to save the JPEG because you wanted to save the file for the web or something else like that where layers are not available, I'd still recommend saving two versions of the image. One as a PSD which contains all the layers and then one of the web graphic that you wanted to create with no layers at all saved into the JPEG format. You never know when you're going to need access to those layers. That's why I emphasize that so much. So. What's the image going to look like without layers? Well, to simulate what it's going to look like, I'm going to come up here to the Layers menu, and then I'll come all the way down and choose the Flatten Image command like so. Now we see all of those layers, all those wonderful layers, flatten straight down into one background layer. And apart from that, nothing else has changed, especially not with the appearance of the image all that we've seen change is over here in the layers panel. We haven't lost any details, no colors have changed, nothing's happened except the removal of those layers. And why does that matter? Well if I want to go back in now and change that red text back to white, I'm going to have to do a lot of work because Photoshop can no longer identify the text from the rest of the image. So we're going to have a really tough time selecting the text and then recolouring it in a way that looks credible. Relatively that's a huge piece of work and there's no doubt in my mind that even if we did have the time to do it like that it wouldn't look as good as making the changes with live editable text on its own layer. In order to get our layers back I'm going to click the undo button a few times until I see those layers come back into view. Thank goodness for history here inside Photoshop Elements. Now although I've done that and I've brought those layers back, if we'd have saved the file out as a JPEG or something like that or we'd have gone too far forward in the editing process, then we simply would not be able to come back and reinstate those layers. So that option would not be possible. Well I hope you enjoyed and benefited from seeing the differences between a flat and a layered file. Coming up in the next few videos we're going to take a look at some real examples of using layers and check out the colour picker.